What is the difference between Nikon TTL and TTLBL flash? Nikon flash has changed over the years. Here's a brief overview. All TTL works in any setting, meters off focus point area, doesn't compensate for ambient exposure. All TTLBL makes subject exposure the same as the background lighting, meters off the active focus points, uses distance information from the lens if the background lighting is underexposed. So is the flash output. New TTL works in any setting, meters off focus point area, compensates for ambient exposure. New TTL BL gains the ability to work in all settings, aims for correct exposure of the subject regardless of the background exposure, incorporated in the built in flash and wireless flash. Cameras before the D200 use the old modes, cameras after the D200 use the new modes. The D200 itself wasn't quite ready for the update, so it doesn't do flash as well as it should. Up to around 2003, TTL flash thought it was the only light source and couldn't balance flash with ambient. With an underexposed subject, TTL flash does a good job of lighting the subject. But when the subject is correctly exposed, it adds enough light for an underexposed subject, which overexposes the subject. Modern cameras don't do this. Watch what happens when we have a modern camera that works correctly with flash and we change the spot metering. TTL flash reverts to the old TTL flash and doesn't compensate for ambient. This results in overexposure. TTL BL itself was originally only for backlit situations. It has the ability to use active focus points to identify the subject in the scene. It was designed exclusively to make the subject the same exposure as the background. But that meant if the background was underexposed, so was the subject. Here we have a backlit situation. The camera's meter shows overexposure. When we have the background correctly exposed, TTLBL flash identifies the subject and works out how much flash to add. But in evenly lit situations, it doesn't see the need to add any flash. So an underexposed scene would stay that way. So at this stage, Nikon takes a step back and thinks, we have a lot of very useful technology being wasted on isolated situations in TTLBL mode. Let's make it able to expose the subject correctly, regardless of the background. And at the same time, TTL flash could gain the calculating ability of TTLBL, so it can also balance flash with the ambient. So let's share the best aspects of each between the two flash modes. Nikon technicians add TTLBL's ability to balance ambient with flash to plain TTL mode. The images on the left are ambient exposure only. The middle images are the amount of light TTL flash adds. The right hand images show that the resulting exposure are all equal. Nikon technicians add TTL's ability to work in all situations to TTLBL mode. These days you don't have the option of the old TTL, unless you switch your camera to spot metering as we've seen. That way you can force the old TTL mode. Watch the flash mode change when spot metering is selected. Why? Well, there's two possible options. Maybe switching to spot metering turns off all the metering pattern, so it can no longer differentiate between a subject and a background, or maybe because some people are just used to the old TTL and want to keep using it. Old habits die hard, but in any case, if it works for you and you understand how to use it and you get good results, then well, why not? You just have to compensate for the ambient. So at this stage, TTL and TTL BL are both balanced filled flash. They just meet it slightly differently. So which mode is superior? I'll give you a clue which mode Nikon thinks is superior. They made the built-in flash work in TTLBL mode, even if it says it is in plain TTL mode. Watch how the built-in flash treats the situation. With the focus point on the white subject, the flash exposes for that subject. Then we move the focus point to a darker subject in the same setting. We are using center-weighted metering to eliminate 3D matrix metering from the equation. The flash fired brighter, with the focus point moved to the dark object. That's not normal TTL flash. Also, 
Nikon's wireless flash actually uses TTLBL style metering. After all, when you're working with multiple channels, you need TTLBL's ability to do calculations to work out your final exposure. So why is the built-in flash using TTLBL mode? Let me show you something interesting about the effect that distance information from the lens has on the flash exposure. First, we set the lens manually to its closest focus point. Then we take a picture with the flash and change to infinity focus and take another picture. The flash is brighter at infinity compared to close focus mode. We saw two stops difference, simply changing from close focus to infinity. No other changes in the settings. Although we can see a two stop change with a simple change of focus distance, the subject really was at infinity, the flash could fire at full power, still have ho no hope of lighting it. But in this case, the reflected light coming back from the subject has reduced the flash output. This shows that we have distance information plus reflected light deciding the final output. The amount that each factor affects the final output depends on several variables, like where the flash is, how it is connected to the camera, what position the flash head is, and, and so on. So why is this distance information so important? The most accurate form of flash is guide number. You set the distance from your subject, and this exposure is perfect for any subject at that distance. Think about it. The sunny 16 rule works anywhere on Earth, because we are all essentially the same distance from the sun. The sunny 16 rule states that on a clear, sunny day, if your shutter speed and ISO are the same, then an aperture of f16 will give you the correct exposure anywhere on Earth. It's the same with the flash set at a constant output. If it is the same distance from any subject, the exposure will be the same, which is why guide number is the most accurate form of flash. This is why the built-in flash is more accurate than any expensive flash you add to your camera. The system knows that the distance will always be the same, because it is fixed to your camera. So your built-in flash, which uses a new TTL-BL mode, even if it says TTL, leans its exposure calculations more strongly to the distance information from your lens and less toward reflected light than an external flash does. Because its distance is always fixed, it's guaranteed. This tells us that if you're using forward-facing flash, which we avoid in most cases, but it's unavoidable in fast-moving situations, especially outdoors, TTLBL will yield the most accurate results. There was actually an issue with the first Tamron 17-50mm 2.8 lens that was released. Some people were reporting overexposure when using that lens. And that's because it reported the distance information wrong. Tamron fixed that on the next version of their lens, but um, just keep that in mind that a third-party lens might not work as well as a proper Nikon lens with your TTLBL mode. The first lenses with distance information came out with a D on them, like the ever-popular Nikon 50mm f1.8 D. This was a special feature back then, but today is not even mentioned on the lenses because it's now standard. A bit like the earlier cars with electric windows. They used to advertise it as a feature. Well, this car has electric windows. Now it's not even mentioned because it's, it's expected. They've all got it. So what is the main real-life difference between TTL and TTLBL? Standard TTL mode shows no difference with the change of the focus point. Now we change to TTLBL mode. We take another to photos with the focus point in different places. Note that we are in center weighted metering mode. This is to prevent matrix metering from exaggerating the results. Now there is a marked difference in results compared to plain TTL mode. TTLBL mode has 3D metering. Now watch what happens when we change to matrix metering, which is also 3D. As we move the focus point, watch the exposure meter changing. Nikon's 3D matrix metering has decided that the scene is now underexposed. So TTLBL increases the flash exposure even more. That increase is due to a change from center weighted metering to Nikon's 3D matrix metering. Changing back to center-weighted metering would tell the metering program that the exposure was okay where it was. 
Your TTL flash modes are watching your exposure meter to determine how much flash to add. As the different metering modes place the exposure meter at different points, the flash will add different outputs. My D90 would only add full flash all the way down to minus 1.7 under exposure. But as it ticked over to minus 2, the flash would just suddenly take over and fire at full power to light the scene. And that would mean the difference between correct exposure and underexposure if you change your metering mode and, and your exposure meter tells you at a different exposure to what the previous mode said. Can moving the active focus point affect my flash output? With TTL we have seen that happen when demonstrating the 3D aspect of the program. With plain TTL not as much, unless you're in matrix metering mode, because that decides which is your subject based on the active focus point. But you must choose between the slightly more predictable nature of TTL, which is similar to center weighted metering, or the more accurate for the subject metering of TTL-BL. What else can we learn about Nikon Flash? Have a look at the SB800 Flash to understand a little bit more about the system. There's a switch which tells the system when the flash head is tilted upwards for bounce flash. That makes the program use the distance, the distance information less than it would, because now the distance will be different depending on what the flash is bouncing off, how high the ceiling is, what color it is, etc. There's a switch that tells the flash when a diffuser is fitted and makes it fire a little stronger. What does that tell you? There are so many variables to consider that every clue they can get from how you are using the flash helps in calculating a better exposure. Refracted light and distance information alone isn't enough. Then there are flash modifiers and umbrellas that change the metering readings and throughout the system's calculations. So experiment with how you are going to use your flash and work out the compensation you need to make in your particular situation. And also there is wireless flash where distance information becomes less useful because you've got your, your flash off your camera on a stand somewhere. But the distance information is still important with regard to 3D matrix metering for the ambient and what the matrix program determines to be the subject. What other features of TTLBL can we experiment with? How about comparing it to matrix metering in a subject that moves to the side? Have a look at these images. In all these tests, TTLBL for each body behaves the same as matrix metering with ambient only. If you have the time, pause the video to analyze it. Here we see that the D5100 behaves differently to the D90. Here are some tests with the D40. Pause the video to analyze the images. Just keep in mind that TTLBL on each camera body behaves very much like matrix metering for that body. The programs are linked and change with each body. In conclusion, you have to keep in mind the fact that the flash is controlled by your camera body, so its behavior may change over time, even with the same old flash. Your camera body decides how much flash it wants in the final exposure, and it is forever evolving with each new body. It's like a computer's operating system. It constantly gets fine-tuned. The way it works now may change with the next camera body. My D7500 exposes well with plain TTL mode on the SB800, but an early Nikon body would overexpose with TTL mode if the ambient was already well exposed. Tomorrow we may see a camera body that allows you to spot meter flash. Who knows what will happen next? No metering system for ambient or flash is perfect. In any case, not everyone considers the same results as being perfect, so it isn't possible to make everyone happy in every situation. Best you can ask for is a system that gives reasonably consistent and relatively predictable results so you can more easily understand how to work along with it. For me, TTLBL is best when you're outdoors and have to have your flash facing forward. Indoors with a bounce flash, it does a good job too, so I just leave my flash in TTLBL mode. But most of the time the results are so similar from the two modes that I wouldn't notice much difference if I left it in TTL mode either. I hope I've given you a better understanding of Nikon Flash.